All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for the MLG Spring Championships 2013 tournament in Anaheim, California. Join me, or joining me, is going to be Josiah, aka Joj. I have not called you Joj at all, man. It's just for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, Josiah is just so much easy or easier for me to say. Joj just reminds me of George for some reason. I don't think your name's George, but we are into game number one, of course, guys. Of this best of three series in the bottom left of course representing team evil geniuses we are going to have our red protoss player it's going to be in control and josiah go ahead and introduce his opponent and on the top right hand location of neo planet s we have a blue terran player general and we don't know too much about general we know he's kind of a regular of mlg events and he's gone to several over the last couple of years but i don't know too much about his play style so i'm interested to see how he uh how he plays and how he how he reacts to playing, you know, a known pro in control. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and it, it might, maybe a little bit of my mistake. I should have probably looked at his profile, got a little bit of a peek to figure out, you know, what league he's in, his rank, his points, all that good stuff. But regardless, um, I'm still thinking this should be a pretty, pretty good match. Now, in control, of course. If you guys are not familiar with the StarCraft 2 scene, he is a big, big community figure. He's a host, he's a caster, he's a player. He was a professional player for a very, very long time. Still consistently practices and, uh, and just grinds out a bunch of games to really, really make his understanding of the game and his skill, you know, acceptable for people to actually appreciate and to understand. So he is kind of, you know, going into this game, as you said, General may not be the biggest name. People may not know who he is. And just just based on that fact, you are going to give a slight advantage just because of name Nordi Noriati Noriati. What's the word? Noriati. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, I'm just like stuttering over my words, man. Uh, two in <laughs> control. So based on that, maybe just maybe uh, it might be a quick 2-0, but you never know. He is a Terran player. He does have Hellbats, and he does have Widowmites. That's absolutely I'm right. I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk about balance, but <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> he does, he definitely does have all that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is this is going to be an interesting game, I think. Uh, End Control has, as you mentioned, he's kind of moved more away from my focus is I'm just a player and that's who I'm going to be, that's it. And he's moved away from that to where he still plays and he still wants to be considered a player, he is considered a player, I think. But he also, I mean, like, there are more demands on his time than on the average player's time. Like he's got to be, he's the team captain for Team EG North America. He's the team, uh, you know, he's he uh, has to go and make events. He's a he's a big big uh, sponsor spoke person and team spoke person. So he's got a lot more demands on his time than the average player might be. And so general, I feel like against some of the EG pros, EG in control might be the guy to beat and the guy that he can be has the most chance to beat uh, just because of those time demands. I 100% agree with you, and uh, I'm thinking now. It's, it's going to be up to in control to kind of pace out this game. He definitely, I would assume, has more experience than general, unless it's, it's like a Korean Smurf and we have, you know, we don't know who it is. But the, the build that he's going for has me thinking that he's extremely, extremely confident against someone like general. He's going for what it looks like to be a one base blink play. His Twilight Council is done. There is the blink being started in the production tab and general actually going for just a normal uh, a barracks expand build. He's getting a reactor, so he's going to have quite a few marines to possibly deal with it. But the problem here is going to be this blink. Can in control control it, uh, or can in control control the blink? You know, the blink stalkers <laughs> nicely, or is is general going to scout it out, get some bunkers in the main and the natural, and be able to fend it off? Yeah, I mean, this is a tough, tough build for Terran to hold off. I, I've got to say, I know a lot of Terran players who really don't like it. But in in heart of the swarm, especially like in Wings of Liberty. The blink all in off of one base was a very potent build, but in Heart of the Swarm with Mothership Core and with uh, with Time Warp, the once the Terran goes on the two base, Time Warp can be thrown down on that ramp, and Marines can be caught out of position very easily. So General's going to have to be very careful, and In Control is really going with an aggressive build in this first game. We're starting to see some pylons being built here towards the right side of the map. Already has a pylon towards, uh, you know, right outside his natural, so he can easily be able to warp in just in case, you know, that pylon gets killed or something like that happens. But he's actually expanding behind it too, and I kind of like this choice. This is kind of the variation of this play where you, you're, you're doing the early opening, but at the same time you're not really committing that much economy into it because you're going to fall back on this natural base. So once this blink finishes, we'll see how much resources in control actually commits to it. He is throwing down the robotics facility, which is, again, another signifier that he's going to be transitioning into possibly Colossus uh, or maybe even Templar play. But at this point, I would assume it's, it's most likely going to be Colossus here for in control. 
Yeah, I, I would say so. And, and now in control is adding on those two extra gateways. And uh, like you said, he has expanded. This is an interesting. This is an interesting choice, I think, hmm. uh, because because this this early investment in the Twilight Council has definitely put his economy behind General. And if I look at the worker count, it favors Terran and plus Mulos. That means Terran's pretty happy with that. Uh, and I'm not really sure. I, I wonder if maybe this is a reaction to the Twilight Council being being scouted with Blink being researched. Uh, but but General has his number. He doesn't think that it's anything weird like DTs. He's got bunkers in a bunch of different places. And General is pretty pretty well off defended against any kind of Blink pressure. But there's only four stalkers out there. And this is kind of the the cool thing about this play. I mean, I hope In Control doesn't commit to more to more stalkers because I'm going to say a really really good point is he's not making more, and that's that makes the gas be able to be used for things like an observer, things like possibly a robotics babe, maybe double forge, maybe you know a twilight or excuse me a temple archives, and maybe go for like a two base charge push with with blink or something you know ridiculous like that because you know you mentioned it the Terran player is going to easily defend it two bunkers in the main base. Two bunkers in the natural, that's plenty. And at this point, he's going up to medevac. So in control needs some sort of AoE to be able to deal with this medevac transition and possibly just a, a quick medevac viking uh, timing push if he decides to go for Colossus. But, you know, on general's part, this is this is absolutely superb defense. Yeah, definitely agree. And here comes a missile turret up at the... Uh, ooh, actually, he salvages the bunkers at the top of the ramp, but uh, adds a missile turret at the bottom at the, at the natural. And I like that choice. That'll help him scout some SCD, or uh, kill some observers and keep his opponent a little bit more in the dark. But over in, in control space, he is adding on the robotics bay. It was kind of a toss of kind of be uh, Colossus or Templar Tech first. The fact that there's no forges by 10 minutes into the game is kind of worrying me, as as the Terran player is definitely extending his lead. He's already got plus one. And, and I can, you can see that the Terran player is getting kind of confused. He's pulled some SCVs to repair bunkers, but salvaged three, and he sees that there's not that many stalkers out on the map. And he's, I'm, I'm not sure that he quite knows what to do from this point. And here we go. We're going to have a little bit of a blink up in the main base. Observer's, of course, going to be there to spot it. No scan going down. General, maybe, uh, wants to save his scans for the mules as Terran players are extremely greedy with uh, what they use their orbital command energy for. But, you know, a little bit of nice little pressure here from in control. And because he didn't commit so much into it, he's not just going to lose these units. And basically right now, he's just using this for map control. If you notice behind it, as you mentioned, the robotics phase been started. We're seeing the double forge. So he's going to start on his upgrades a little bit later. But Stim's done right now from general. He's going to go ahead and make his way towards the center. And in control, going to lose two stalkers. A little bit of miscontrol there by the evil geniuses, Protoss. But supply count surprisingly in the favor of general 100 to 87 and do you think he's actually going to go for a push here i i do this one one time like this is going to be a pretty nice one one timing window as the protoss player is going to be investing in a bunch of different tech he's got one one going on two forges he's got a robotics and colossus production coming out and and really a lot of a lot of gas and money brain control has been spent on investments that will not pay off by the time plus one armor finishes which is right now and this two medevac timing could potentially do a lot of damage. Good force fields would be necessary, but in control doesn't get them. Sentries get sniped, and this is a oh. big move from in, for uh, General. And General's actually going to focus on the Immortal in control, only left with four Stalkers and one Colossi. And this is actually very, very problematic for the Evil Geniuses player. Falling down to 60 supply, Colossi comes out, but it looks like General going to try to focus it down. Imagine if he was rallying units. I would think he would take the win in this game, but so far he's doing so much damage. Two workers have been killed. Not the biggest deal, but the whole army of in control is just gone what does he have left a zealot and a mothership core so 100 percent right now with the supply advantage the terran player has a, a very very good shot at possibly building up another bio force and then going for that final push yeah and i like that it was kind of kind of nice to depower that robotics facility and keep that keep the colossus production you know kind of kind of hurt but but really, General forced two photon overcharges. Oh, and he's pressuring again. He's killing more sentries. He could be lifted up right now if he wanted to. Yeah, and there he goes. And it's just very efficient plays from General. I'm really loving it. And this this could be an upset. General is, is not doing anything stupid, right? He's he's not saying, oh, I, I smell blood. I can kill him right now and stop playing. He's, uh, he's going for that third command center. He's transitioning. He's continuing to tech. The one thing that I'm not liking is that his... Uh, 2-2 two, two timing is way off. He's not adding a third or a second engineering bay and, or an armory, so his 2-2 two, two is going to be delayed. Whereas 
the Protoss player has just equalized, but there's a drop in the main and more probes are going down. 21 probes have been killed, and the supply is now 132 to 53, with General with just an amazing advantage. Uh, yeah, this. I mean, at this point in the game, General has done so much economic damage. He still has the units left in the main base, going to start to kill additional harvesters here, up to 26 workers now. And in control, really struggling to get some units on the map. And it's, he's take is, is the Terran player taking, okay, he already has a third behind it. So even if this just absolutely dies, which is going to be very unlikely, he's going to have a big, big advantage economically wise. He's sending some Vikings, knowing that there's going to be Colossi. Now we're going to see a huge, huge supply advantage, 140 to 43. And this just seems like a build order win here for the Terran. There is a GG and in control going to fall down here in game number one. Yeah, and that was I was very impressed by the play from General, not overextending in any in any obvious ways, playing very solidly. I'm liking it. I'm I really like it. I agree. That was that was kind of the that was just a build designed to hit a timing. You said two two, you said one one, those are key numbers because he knows that okay, I get my engineering base at this time. Now is when I'm gonna go for a push. Now I'm gonna finish my two two, I'm gonna go for another push. And the early play from in control with the blink stalkers, I love the choice because he's able to actually control the map in the early portions. But the thing that was a little bit problematic was, you know, the Colossus transition into double forge is pretty, pretty standard. But the Terran player general probably played against that build many many times he realized that in control is a player that likes to go colossi templar rather than templar colossi made some vikings didn't even need to make the vikings he honestly just had too much bio went for the push and and forced out a gg from in control so he's gonna take the 1-0 win in his best of set or best of three series excuse me best of seven that'll be pretty pretty long bracket uh, but he's gonna be up 1-0 oh. we'll see if in control can uh, make a comeback and tie up the series and we'll find out for that after a quick commercial break